Hi everybody. All right, so it's a countdown to mitten series now. Um, so I decided I'm not going to do like the, you know, the last five days up until the conference. I'm basically going to just post them as I, as I, whenever I feel like I have the time. All right, so you know these will be little uh, ten minute uh, little mini conferences I'll do in lieu of me not presenting this year, uh, so that I can go to every session myself and uh, learn some other things. And uh, all right, so uh, let's see. The first thing we'll talk about is special person. So uh, on, the, on the back here on the screen, I have uh, all the special person questions. And uh, I'm going to have to go over to my computer over there and bring up another thing in a minute. OK. So all right. So basically, in level one, I mean, you can introduce special person whenever you feel like it. Um, you, you know, if you're not doing anything uh, CI based or doing anything with special person, you want to start introducing it to your level two classes or level three. And you can do it any time in the school year. I mean, I know there's some teachers who are starting it uh, as of last week in April. Um, I start it at the very beginning of the school year and uh, even with the level ones, you know, I have Spanish one, Spanish two, and I do it with level ones as well, right off the bat. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's all about however many questions you want to ask the special person, uh, the student, and uh, um, I have 12 questions. So let's see, so basically by the end of the first week, I give out this sheet, uh, and I have 12 questions up there. I'm, we're going to read each one in a minute together here. Um, and the students fill it all out, and each day I have at least one student come up and sit on the stool in the middle of the room, and I'm standing next to the student and uh, asking the student these questions, and he or she's responding back, and I'm writing their answers up on the whiteboard. Um, and also circling those questions with the rest of the class to make sure they're paying attention. And you'll see, I'll, I'm going to have a couple, uh, maybe about 15, 20 kids during lunch or recess come in and we'll do a, a demo because um, I've, I've been done with special person. Of course, you can come up with another 12 questions and continue for the rest of the school year, but I didn't. But all right, so let me get up here and see if I'm still in the frame. All right. All right, so this is what it looks like. We have, uh, I have four columns. First column is the English questions. All right, the questions in English, um, especially with level one, just because, you know, they don't know any Spanish coming into the classroom. So it says, what is your name? We're going to do this the first, what is your name? Uh, the next column, it's got the question in Spanish or your target language. Como te llamas? And then the, uh, the third column, it says first person answer, like yo, first person I. So, me llamo and a blank there. They write their name in that blank. Okay? And then the fourth column is just third person, he, she, with a blank, like, se llama, he or she calls himself, blank, se llama. That's just for them because all my questions to the class will be, when I'm reiterating what the special person had said, I'm going to be saying it in third person. So, for example, I would say, what's your name? And they say, Joe. Oh, Joe, nice to meet you. I missed your way. Um, class, what is his name? You know, because so it's in third person, all right? Um, so they're hearing first person, second person, third person for all 12 of these questions, okay? And I, I would say one person, I, you pretty much at least, it's up to you how fast you go, but at least five to eight minutes with the, that student in the middle of the classroom, and then you're stopping and you're circling and you're asking the, the rest of the class what you asked this student and what his or her response was. All right. Okay, so the next question, how old are you? ¿Cuántos años tienes? All right, and then tengo blank años, so they put in a number, 14, 15, 13, and I write all the numbers, you know, up on the board because they're going to be roughly 13 to 18 years old, right? So I write those numbers out in the target language on the board. They pick a number about their age. We're setting this up one day before we actually implement this the next day with student number one, okay? Uh, when is your birthday? ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? My birthday is, mi cumpleaños es el, whatever. My birthday is the whatever of whatever month. 14 de Abril, April 14th. 
And then the third column says his birthday is April 14th. Next question, where do you live? It says, where do you live? These are the English questions. The next column is, donde vives? That's the question in your target language. And then they're only writing their answers down in third person to set this up. Vivo and I live in Ann Arbor. And then vive, okay. Next question, where are you from originally? In Spanish, de donde eres originalmente? Soy de, I'm from, that's their answer. And they put in where they're from originally. Maybe it's the same place that where they live. A lot of times it is, but sometimes it's not. Um, next question, do you have a pet? Tienes una mascota. And sometimes they'll say animal also. Tienes una mascota, un animal en la casa? Do you have a, mask, you know, a pet or an animal in your house? <clears throat> and then, um, where are we? And then they say, yes, I have. Si, sí, tengo. And then, you know, I write down all the possible things they, you know, one, whatever they want to say. I write the words on the board. A cat, un gato, dos gatos, a, a, a dog. You know, maybe some of them, you know, a bird, or maybe a lizard. Maybe some of them have a lizard in their class, or in their class, in their house. And, uh, or the other option is, no, I don't have any pet. No, no tengo ninguna mascota. All right? And then, next question, what do you like to do? ¿Qué te gusta hacer? And then the third column, me gusta, something's pleasing to me, swimming, me gusta nadar. And on the back of the sheet, I'll give them, there's a whole bunch of verbs, and they're all in the infinitive, and there's the English translation next to it, because eventually, you know, we'll get to verbs eventually, you know, down the road if you're doing like a set textbook curriculum. And then they just pick one, okay? So they're like, oh, I like drawing. What's that say? Dibujar? So they'll write dibujar, you know, and then there you go. They don't have to worry about that. One word that they picked. Um, Let's just put it this way. After we do special person quite a bit, they already know a whole lot of verbs in their head, you know, because you're doing a, one student per day, and, or maybe two students per day, the special person. So they're already hearing the verbs before you do it in the unit, in the textbook, if you're doing that. What type of music do you like? ¿Qué tipo de música te gusta? All right, and then they say, me gusta, and then they put in whatever. Me gusta rap. All right. Um, what type of, uh, what is your favorite social media? Que uh, ¿Cuál es tu red social favorita? And they just say, es a Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. Um, do you play a sport? ¿Juegas un deporte? Yes, I play, and then they put in a sport. And then you can, once again, on the back of the sheet, or put them up on the board, um, all the sports, they pick a sport, write it in there. Okay? Uh, next. Where do you like to visit someday? ¿A dónde te gustaría visitar algún día? I would like to visit. Me gustaría visitar a... Um, well, you know, such and such would be of interest me to visit, right? It's the actual structure, but I would like to visit. Um, and then they put in a, a place, right? Texas, France, Austin, you know. Um, any city, any country, all right, or any state. Next question, what class do you like? Que clase te gusta? And then on the back of the sheet, have all the subjects or put them up on the board to set this up. Social studies, right? Estudios sociales, matemáticas, la clase de arte, okay? And then the last question, how many siblings do you have? Cuantos hermanos tienes? Right? And then they just say, tengo, I have, and then whatever. Dos, tres, cuatro. If they don't have a sibling, it's no tengo hermanos, which is underneath, um, you know, as an option if they're an only child or something. So there you go. So I got all these questions. How many do I have? I think 12, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I, it's up to you how many questions you want. You know, you want only five questions, then do that. I don't think more than I don't think you want to do more than 13 questions. So maybe reduce it, you know, or come up with if you don't like these questions, it's whatever questions you want. But I just think that this is a, basically a, a good snapshot about getting to know somebody, so we can have this you know sense of community, and everyone starts you know learning whatever who, whoever you know um, about everybody. Okay, I'll just check in the time. All right. So they answer all the questions in the third column. Then, the next day, 
or the day of, but nah, I mean, this took a while to set up and then do something else. Talk, do the calendar or the weather talk or something like Tina Hargan or, you know, something like that. Um, okay. So the next day, um, you know, got the stool, goes in the middle room, and you can just take a volunteer. Someone wants to volunteer. Ah, okay, Pete, come on up. You know, so they sit down on the chair. They can bring their sheet with them, okay? And then um, I go ahead and just start asking questions. Uh, I, I have a PowerPoint, which I might bring up on the screen if I feel like it, and I have my little clicker, and then each question I say, the, you know, the question's up on the screen too. You know, como te llamas? So on my PowerPoint, it's como te llamas, so they can see the written, ver written word, you know, question each time over and over and over as well as an option. Um, a lot of times at one point I just stopped, you know, putting up the, you know, bringing up the PowerPoint slides because at that point, at one point, like, they already know. They already seen the questions over and over. You're doing it so many times in class, right? If you have a class of 33 kids, you know, and you're asking the same questions and, you know, that's a lot of input, right? For if, you know, if, if you have 35 kids in class, they're going to be hearing these interviews 35 times. All right. So anyways, so I say, okay, we have a special guest. And I say this in the target language. And I'm like, class, um, okay. Um, I don't want to say their name first, you know, like, um, because then, like, I don't want to say, hey, we have a special guest. His name's Pete. You know, because that's, I wanted him to say his, you know, his name for the first time is the first question. So I say, all right, here's our special guest, everybody. You know, maybe a little clap or something. And then I just go through the questions in order, and he can read off the sheet if he wants. Especially when they're level one, because they, you know, they're coming with a clean slate of not knowing, having any uh, of your target language before coming into class. So, como te llamas? You know, and I'll just do this in English. Okay, what's your name? And he says, P. I don't need a full sentence. If they want to do that, they feel comfortable, they can give me a full sentence. What's your name? P. Ah, class. His name's P. I write his name on the board. Uh, how old are you? And he says, 13. Ah. And so I, I spell out it, and I could put the number next to it, but I spell out the number trece, if he's 13. Then I ask the next question, I'm like, when's your birthday? And he says, uh, cuatro de uh, abril. Oh, again, uh, you know, some sheet or whatever, give them all the months so they can pinpoint their birthday, you know, in the setup time the day before, before we start special person. Then, uh, then I might just stop for a minute, or I might just ask the fourth question, where do you live? And he says, I live in Celine. Ah, you live in Celine? You know, I might restate it to get the vives, right? You know, the input again. And then I put Celine on the board. Then I'll stop for a minute and say, class, what is his name? And they all say P. I'm like, okay, how old is he? They all say trece. I mean, they can read off the board because every response that he says, I'm writing on the board. Uh, when's his birthday? Okay, what's his name? They ask the answer that question again. Then I go back to him again. Where are you from originally? And then he's like, wherever. Uh, do you have a pet? He says, I have a cat. What do you like to do? Draw. He might just say dibujar. If he wants to say a complete sentence, me gusta dibujar. He can. It's up, up to him. Um, and then I might stop again and, say, and then go back and, you know, not go in the predictable order again. I can just say, class, where does he live? All right. Um, what kind of pet does he have? Or, or I might even ask class, show, raise your hand if you have a pet. You know, why not? And then go back to him again. It's however you want to do it. Um, you know, how old is he? 13. Oh, class, raise your hand if you're 13. You know, I'm not 13. You know, tengo, tienes, tiene, tengo, tienes, tiene, you know, circle that a little bit. And then go back to him. I mean, you could have him sitting here for about a good 10 minutes of class. All right, and then when he's done, you know, show, you know, clap, and then he goes and sits down. And it's up to you if you want to do another student. That might take 20 minutes of your class right there, right? But, um, or just do, or, or do it the next day. Okay, so, you know, 30 class days for 30 students, or maybe 15 class days, and you're doing two kids a day, you know? Um, so there, that's basically it, um, as far as how to do special person. And I think it's more sense when I, you know, I model it and I bring some kids in during recess to do it. Because I'm already done with special person. I almost wanted to do it again with another series of questions, but um, and that's and that's so that's that's one thing. Um, another thing. Let's see, where are we on this? 14 minutes. Oof. Um, okay. Oh, 
Um, and then someone asked me, do the kids all have to be writing, writing down something? I used to do that. I did that like either last year or the year before where they had to write down the information of every student like on these like, you know, that third column sheet, you know, that third column on the sheet making like three of that same thing and on the back another so they can write out information for six students, turn it in, they get another sheet to fill out the information for the next stu six students we do in class. I don't do that anymore. That's too cumbersome. Um, <clears throat> so what I end up doing is taking after like Tina Harganen, um, what she says. You want everyone to be listening. They're responding correlately to what you're asking them about reviewing what you know about the, the student that's on the stool. And as soon as you know English is, you know English is, happens, breaks the flow of the language. I just immediately stop. You know, and then I slowly walk to the rules. Go like this to the rule, smile, take a breath. You know, the rule I might be pointing to is listen with the intent to understand, which is rule number one. Or one person speaks while the other others listen. I mean, it's always one and two for the most part, right? If you're following the rules of interpersonal communication and engagement, you know, those, those six rules from Tina. So, and that's it. If you keep doing that, I mean, you know, they, they, you've got them on. Plus, it's like you're engaging them because after you got one or two questions you ask the special person, you're, you ask them. Now, you could also, if you want, um, ask specific students randomly. And mix it up a little bit, right? So, what's your name? Pete, what do you like to do? Draw, what's your favorite uh, social media? Snapchat, do you have a pet? Yes, I have a dog. Uh, let's see, uh, Max. Um, where does he live? Ah, okay. Um, uh, Leah, um, what's his sister's name? You know, and ask on the cuff as well to make, you know, keep them, you know, alert. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about writing this out, but you know whether or not you should have your students be doing something during special person. Uh, I guess that's about it. Um, another suggestion is maybe if you want to, you know, if you start this at the beginning of the year with your level one and twos, or threes, you know, um, and you want to do it again after you get through everybody, maybe take a little bit of a break and then go back and do, you know, have another six or seven set questions, right? Maybe at the end of the year, like right now, I'm doing some past tense with level one. Yes, I could do another five or six, you know, maybe, maybe just seven questions again instead of 12, 13, but like I'm doing, you know, we're at, we're, I don't wait around to level two to you know start asking my kids stuff in the past tense. I'm already doing it now. So one of my special questions might be, um, "A dónde fuiste el verano pasado?" You know, where'd you go last summer? Okay, or where'd you go last weekend? "A dónde fuiste la semana pasada?" Last Saturday, el sábado pasado. And they can say a full sentence. Fui a, I went to, you know, or they just say Kroger, you know, you know. I'm not worried about full, you know, full-blown sentences, you know, from them producing and the output, like complete sentences, right? It's all about the input. I mean, all the students are listening to what I have to say, right? And inputting, I'm inputting, you know, I'm providing the output for this, you know, all these structures over and over and over again. So, and when we do it over and over, and then if you want, you can do, you know, instead of password or something, I think, you know, Bryce Hedstrom does password, and you can do password, but also why not do the special person questions while you're doing the special person questions during that time in the school year. So they're all standing outside in the hall waiting to come in, you go to the door, each student comes by, and you just ask them one of the special person questions. Okay? You know. Do you have a pet? Cat? Okay, enter. Um, what's your name? Ah, uh, okay, enter. Uh, what sport do you play? Oh, they haven't. They can't respect. Okay, back in, <laughs> to the back of the line. Next student, and then you eventually get everybody in the classroom, right? So you can do you could do th those. You know, a random special question, person question, in lieu of like you know the password, a one word password. I did that. Um, if you want to do like special person again, at the end of the um, you know the second a second time around. Um, like I said, you can come up with another five or six questions, or it's special person and you just know you want to ask six or seven questions and they're going to be different every time. How about that? So, <laughs> because, you know, because if they already did the first time around and then you may be asking some random, you know, some questions off the cuff that you've already done with other activities throughout your class, 
for instance, okay, student comes up this time, they're not reading off the sheet anymore. You just, whatever five, five questions you want to come up with in your head. So for example, oh, uh, hi P, um, what is your sister's name and how old is she? Okay, so they just go ahead and say, you know, um, Jessica and 14 years old, whatever. I'm like, okay, next question, let me think, uh, I don't know. Uh, what class do you have first hour and who's your teacher? And then they give you that information. Third question, okay, let me think. Um, where did you go last Saturday? Okay, um, and then another question, uh, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about the novel Robo en la Noche? You know, the class book we're reading. And they say, it's fun, it's boring, I don't like it, or whatever they want to say, right? And then I think of another question. I'm like, uh, what book are you reading during silent reading? You know, they say, The New Girl, La Chica Nueva. Okay, very good. <laughs> Sit down. And then the next student, you know, you know, maybe I might do that actually. I don't know. Um, but just make it five questions and do two students a day. You know, come, you know, and then you got like a nice, uh, you know, good, 50, I don't know, 15 minutes with just the two students. Cut the questions in half, make them random you know, off the top of your head for the second round of special person? Maybe? Yeah. Oh, another thing is, if you want to do something like this, you might want to, um, let's say, you do, you know, maybe you do uh, three days, three different students, and then the fourth day, you don't do special person, but you bring those three students up here that you did the last three days, and if you can kind of remember these, or if you have a student in class who's writing out this information from you, every, every each person that you interviewed, um, have them all three of them stand up, you know, shoulder to shoulder, and then you say, all right, class, uh, who out of these three students has a sister named Leah? And then they say so on, so if they can remember, you know, the last, you know, some of the information from the last three interviews, you know. Uh, who uses, you know, whose favorite social media is Twitter? And they say, this person, okay, you know, uh, whose birthday is uh, April 14th, okay. Um, or, you know, I th that's better to do it that way as a review, because all I have to do is say the, the student's name versus, um, hey, who remembers, when, is, when was his birthday, you know, and they can't, you know, maybe come up with a 14 de abril, certainly not if it's a level, if it's level one and you've been doing, you know, in the second week of the school year. So, so that kind of gives you an idea. Or, oh my God, this is like 22 minutes. Okay, we're almost done here. Um, <laughs> if you watch this, awesome. Uh, another thing, what you might do, um, you do like quick quizzes with the kids. You know, maybe uh, at the end of this, you know, save special. I, you know, I always did special person at the beginning of the hour after I talk about the weather and the calendar talk, Tina Hargaden. Uh, or you can do it at the end. You know, do special person and the end the day of special person, um, wherever you want to put it in within the class period. Um, but then maybe do a quick quiz or something. Um, you know, uh, so for example, uh, I'm trying to think. Let's say you have a paragraph template, right? The special person is named blank and it's Ryan or something. He's blank years old, blah, blah, blah. Put it all in a paragraph of 12 questions on a half sheet or something. Um, and so after you're done with the special person, give out the half sheet and then they have to write in the information, you know, in the paragraph to complete the paragraph over the person that we just interviewed. I mean, but the words are up on the board. So they can just, you know, fill those. But they're not in any order. You know, I'm randomly just writing the words all over the place, you know, up on the whiteboard. So it's not like I'm going down the, you know, writing all the answers, you know, from top of the whiteboard down to all 12 questions. I'm just putting it wherever I want on the whiteboard. You can do that. Uh, eventually, maybe I would say, honestly, after you do the 12th special person, then if you want, have them get out a piece of line paper, blank line paper. You, got, you leave all the words and then the information you got from the student up on the whiteboard and say, okay, write out a paragraph over the special person. So, you know, they just literally start writing, the bo you know, in Spanish or French, whatever. The boy's name is Ryan. He's 12 years old. He lives in uh, Celine, but originally he's from Ann Arbor. Uh, he has two sisters and a pet, but, and they're writing the whole thing. His favorite music is rap. His favorite in, uh, social media is this and that. Someday he would like to go travel to Germany, but period, and then submit it. So you can do something like that maybe too, right? Off the cuff. 
Line piece of paper, blank, no prep. You can make a quiz out of it. All right, so I guess that's about it. Hopefully that helps. Um, feel free and uh, email me or, you know, send me a message on Facebook or um, if you want, you know, I'll send you the Google Doc of the special person and the PowerPoint and a couple other, like, little assessments I made, you know, for the special person. All right, so there you go. So... That's the, this is the first one, so we got four more to do. Four more little mini conferences from me for the countdown to Minton. I'm Darren Way. All of you are awesome world language teachers. Have a good weekend. Bye.